Hey guys, welcome back to our today's session at Daniel Security Academy. Find your free spot, sit down, and feel free to get yourself ready. I mentioned quite a few times in the last sessions, we are today going to look into the mode of operations for block ciphers and how they can be turned into stream ciphers. In today's session, we will be briefly talking about mode of operation in general and then dive into detail for the following six modes. Galois counter GCM, electronic codebook ECB, cipher block chaining CBC, cipher feedback CFB, output feedback OFB, counter CTR. And lastly, we'll have a summary again to talk about the learn today. For the mode of operation, we have two different kind of categories. First, Authenticated Encryption with Additional Data, shortly AEAD mode. Here we have the Galois counter mode, which pretty much creates a stream cipher. Then we have counter with cipher block chaining message authentication code, CCCM, and synthetic initialization vector, SIV. On the other hand, we have those modes which only provide confidentiality, but not also integrity. Uh, it's electronic codebook ECB, cipher blockchaining CBC, cipher feedback CFB, output feedback OFB, and counter. The yellow marked modes will be discussed in more detail on the following slides, whereas some are intended for stream use and some for block use. And some of them are very closely related to each other and only have a small nuance in difference. Let's start with the GCM mode, which is the most complicated from the ones we are going to look at. As variables, we have the initial vector, a secret key, the plain text block of up to 256 bit length, authentication data, which can be anything between zero and two to the power of 64 bits, the hash key, and finally the ciphertext itself. One thing you need to know about the initial vector is that it must be unique for each round and a length of 96 bit is recommended to increase the efficiency of the operation. Now let's jump into the diagram on the right hand side in more detail. Let's walk step by step through the mode. Firstly, we derive the counter zero, so the first counter from the initial vector. This is then being used in the actual AES encryption block called EK, here to create the ciphertext. Now we move horizontally to the right by increasing the counter once for counter one and once again for counter two. Both counters are then being used again to run the encryption. The re result of each box is then being XORed with the respective plaintext creating a ciphertext 1 and 2. Next, the provided authentication data is running the function multh using the hash key, which is simply a string of 128 zero bits encrypted using the block cipher, AES in this example. This results get XORed with the first ciphertext and then inputted again into the multh function. This result XOR, the second ciphertext, creates this input for another round of mult H, the central function of then authentication tag creation. The result of this third mult H, I know a lot of mult H here, gets XOR with the length of the authentication data and the ciphertext. This ultimately feeds into the last round of mult H getting XOR with the initial ciphertext created with the counter H to have the authentication tag created. Okay, I promise you that the next modes are definitely simpler than the GCM mode, starting with the electronic codebook ECB. Here we have only three variables, K as the secret key, P as the plain text input, and finally C as the ciphertext output. That's it no authentication data, no hashed keys, or whatever. On the right hand side, you see the mode and its steps. It's three times the same step. You simply take the plain text and the key 
and run the AES encryption block to receive the ciphertext. You then repeat it until the entire plain text is encrypted. That's it. The next mode is cipher block chaining, CBC, which creates kind of a chain of encryption as we reuse the ciphertext generated. Here we have one additional variable apart from the key, the plain text and the ciphertext, an initial vector, which will be used only in the first round. This initial vector gets XORed with the plain text before this is fed into the AES encryption. Then we run our 10, 12 or 14 rounds of AES using the given key. This result is our first ciphertext. In order to encrypt the next chunk of plain text, we are XORing the first ciphertext block with the next plain text block, which then is inputted into the AES encryption block. We continue with this until we have reached the end of the plain text and everything is encrypted. Therefore, the previous encryption block has an impact on the next encryption block. For the cipher feedback CFB, we are having a fairly similar setup for the encryption operation. We have the same variables as before in CBC. But this time we actually use the initial vector with the key to run in the AES encryption. This result is being XORed with the first plain text to create the first cipher text. So in fact, for the first round, we did not really encrypt the plain text, but rather the initial vector and then only XORed the plain text into it. The produced ciphertext is then used in the next round with the key to run the block cipher encryption and XOR it afterwards with the next chunk of plain text. Starting from this round, we pretty much encrypt the previous ciphertext in the AES encryption and again only XOR the plain text at the end into it. This continues until the entire plain text is encrypted. The output feedback OFB looks very alike the CFB mod, with only one key difference. Variables are the same, you know the game. We take the initial vector again with the key and run AES. However, this time we feed this result into the next round as the input for the block encryption mode. In contrast, CFB we use the resulting ciphertext to do so. In parallel, we XOR the plain text with the result and receive the first ciphertext. Also here, we continue until all plain text blocks are encrypted. Finally, next to ECB, probably the simplest mode of operation, counter, CTR. We have the same variables as before, plus actually a counter, which is increasing. In the first step, we have the initial vector IV, also called nuance, here, which gets either concatenated to the counter or XORed with it depending on the cipher of the nuance. This now created initial vector is used with the key in the block cipher encryption of AES, for example. The resulting block is XORed with the plain text block and creates therefore the first cipher text block. Afterwards, the count has increased by one and we'll do the exact same operation again to create all remaining cipher blocks. Let's summarize the six modes. GCM is definitely the most complex mode of all those, but at the same time also the most secure one, including even integrity onto the operation. Also, there are no known vulnerabilities to the GCM mode which bumped its popularity in the past years for sure. ECB is probably the simplest mode as the cipher blocks are not connected with each other at all. Same applies to the CTR mode, another very simple mode having independent blocks from each other. CFB and OFB are very similar to each other and only differ in one point which result is fed into the next round of encryption, the result of the encryption block or the final ciphertext. Lastly, 
CBC is also closely rela related to CEFB and OFB, but CBC uses the plain text to encrypt the next block cipher encryption instead of the initial vector for the other two modes. That's it for today's session. I hope it helped you guys with learning something new today or simply having a refresh of know-how. I hope to see you in the upcoming videos again. Next up is a look into asymmetric encryption systems and feel free to leave comments, questions or feedback under the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content. Have a good one and stay safe.